Hey everyone, Mike here. Today, I'm taking a look at some Starlink beta leaks and my perhaps unusual choice for how I'm gonna handle these sorts of things going forward. Coming up. On July 17th, just one day after my last huge Starlink beta update, you can find that here, a SpaceX employee posted on Instagram a full unboxing of the Starlink starter kit. In the video, we get a good look at the packaging that the kit comes in and a view of the contents and how everything all fits together. But quite soon after, the Instagram post was taken down. Now, it's important to me to keep you updated on all the latest developments in the Starlink beta. And I am going to show you some details from the clip in just a minute. But Starlink updates isn't the only focus of my channel. The Starlink internet constellation is such a huge commercial space project that I just have to cover it. But this leak video presented a dilemma for me. First, the video was from a SpaceX employee. And if the leak was unintentional, then there could actually be professional repercussions for that employee. And I don't really want to be a part of that. Second, the employee probably signed an NDA. So there could also be legal repercussions for that leak data. So again, I don't really want to be a part of that. And third, and probably the most important reason to me is I really want Starlink to succeed. And if SpaceX is adamant on keeping certain details secret and not making them available to the public, I want to respect that, but still keep you guys updated on all the latest. Quite a few of you have reached out to me in the comments to point out this video, and, and thank you very much for that. And I've discussed some of this in those comments, but what I've decided to do is that for any NDA leak, if there's new technical details that I really think would benefit you, the viewers, I'm going to share those details, but without revealing the source. However, I'm not going to share any details that I think might impact the success of Starlink. I want them to succeed. I don't want to get in the way of that. So things like speed tests that they've called out specifically, I'm not going to share that. I might make mistakes. I'm human. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you think that I should have or shouldn't have shared. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, that's the backstory. Now on to the updates. First, I have some details from that employee video to share. And bonus updates, I've got some official data from SpaceX on the Starlink rollout and future direction. If you want to get all my updates as soon as they're released, subscribe down below and hit the bell icon so you can get notifications as soon as the new videos are posted. Okay, here we go. Okay, so like I said, I'm focusing on the technical details. First up is the quick start guide. This really just is the same instructions, plug it in, point it at the sky. But I did want to call out the power supply in the middle. This just clarifies what we kind of expected before, that it's one power over Ethernet supply that supplies both the dish and the Wi-Fi router in the house. Second, this is a picture inside the, the packaged box. First, I think it's really cool that they ship it all connected. As you can see, all the wires are actually plugged in where they're supposed to go. That'll make things much easier. Um, also, the wire, it looks maybe about 75 feet. It's hard to judge in the case, but uh, you can see it's quite long for the wire from the power to the, the dish. This one is just a little bit closer of the dish with the mounting post. Uh, you can see I'm very curious about the Ethernet connection to the dish itself, whether this is a cable that can be replaced with your own. Here you can see the dish actually uh, standing up. It looks a lot like a coffee table. I think that's great. And then a close-up of the mounting post. Again, I'm trying to get a look on 
the end of the ethernet cable, if this is something that could be replaced by the, the user, but it's not really clear from this photo. So that's, I'm really looking to understand that as well. So those are the details I pulled out of the leak video. If you think I shared too much, let me know in the comments. If you think I stripped out too much and didn't share enough, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. There's uh, two other theories floating around I just wanted to share. The first is that this was actually not a leak and that it was done intentionally by SpaceX Public Relations to generate some interest in the beta. And the second theory is that it was done intentionally to actually scare the other beta participants so they would be very reluctant to share anything themselves. I'm a bit skeptical of both of these explanations. Maybe there's some truth there, but it feels like just uh, something unintentional by an employee. If you think differently, or if you've got another theory, let me know in the comments. If you're getting value from these updates, hit the like button on the video down below. It really helps this channel to grow. Okay, on to the official updates. So these official updates are from Jonathan Hoffler, uh, SpaceX's Vice President of Starlink and Commercial Sales. And this comes from a conversation between him and a representative from Telesat. And this was a conference set up by Via Satellite uh, on backhaul uplinks for mobile network operators. Unfortunately, I don't have the video from the original conversation, but I've got the report from this website, which I've uh, linked in the description down below. And what I'm gonna do is just show a couple screenshots of the highlights that uh, I thought were particularly interesting. So the first highlight is actually our first official confirmation here that the friends and family trials, what I've been calling private beta, are actually underway. And it also looks like they're confirming that over the next couple months, perhaps it's being limited to the northern US. So I don't know if that means not Canada. It's not kind of completely clear here. Uh, but then expanding across the world after. And it also confirms that latency target of 20 milliseconds, which would be amazing. And then uh, the same story about continuing to drive it down to 10 milliseconds over time. Next highlight is really just more on the dish. It has some description of the dish, but the thing that I particularly call out as interesting is it extends that instructions, plug it in, point it at the sky, and it says within a few seconds later, you have internet. So that means it could hone and actually track in a signal much quicker than I initially assumed. I assumed it might take, you know, 20, 30 seconds or even a full minute, two minutes to lock on. So that would be amazing if it's just a few seconds. And then finally, this is an update on the intersatellite links. It's slightly less uh, firm than other updates. I, I highlighted here that they have to make sure it's cost effective in order to provide it and implement it. So it's definitely clear they're aggressively attacking it, but it kind of softens their stance on just saying it's coming in the next version to now saying they need to make sure it's cost effective and that it would work in the constellation. So that's interesting to see, and we'll see how that kind of tone changes over time, but potentially less, less certainty there. So those were the highlights that I took out of the article, but definitely give it a read. There's lots of interesting information in there, particularly comparing SpaceX to Telesat and their approach and progress in the market. I've been working hard on my homemade ground station project. I've got some great update videos coming soon. And I'm also diving deeper into the security behind Starlink. And I've got some deeper dive videos on that coming soon as well. So thanks for watching everyone. See you next time.